And lost there, your adorable internet, you, you amazing creatures of the piano. Let's talk about evolution or revolution. I don't know. So I was, uh, I don't know, browsing the internet and stuff. And I came across this interesting new... Well, it's not sort of an experiment. It's more something that's guaranteed to happen. And it's called precision fermentation. Uh, in layman terms, this is kind of like using beer fermentation to create meat, milk, and cheese. And you'll be like, how the hell do you go from beer fermentation to those things? And, well, that's an understatement. It's, it's not going from beer to meat, milk, and uh, cheese. Basically, the process of fermentation has been developed for many centuries. And um, to be honest, fermentation is something that's very useful to us as a civilization because it has made us uh, preserve food better and go through difficult times where there's famine and so on and droughts. Anyway, so fermentation is a great process. But in the recent decades, companies have uh, invested a lot in precision fermentation. And precision fermentation is a little bit more advanced because they use microbes and mycelia or fungi molecules to kind of engineer the DNA sequence uh, and create specific proteins. So it's not actually vegan because it's not plant-based and not animal based, but they can 3D print in a way, and I'm co quoting this, it's not, it's, I'm putting it in quotes because it's not actually 3D printing per se, but they're creating this sort of proteins that they can grow in a lab and create, uh, create meat, milk and cheese in this case, because uh, right now we're using the animal product to convert to food products, but using this method of precision fermentation replaces all the process of growing the enemy uh, the enemy <laughs> the animals taking care of them uh, making sure they're healthy and so on <laughs> and uh, then we just simply speed up the process of creating food now there are positive and negatives to this so from a positive perspective of evolution as a species, this will remove like all the illnesses that can come with the animal breeding and so on, all the um, uh, infestation of uh, other bacteria within the food and so on. So th there are many positives to this, and it can also cover the deficit of food in certain parts of the world where people do not have access to all of the luxuries and commodities that we have in more developed parts of this planet. But then the negative comes on who owns this technology and how do they use it and who has access to it afterwards? How much do you have to pay for it? But considering that we live in an age where, let's take vanilla, for example. Vanilla was traditionally uh, made from plant base and so on, but now it's a petrochemical derivative. So it's synthetically created, a lot of it. And we have vanilla in ice cream, in various uh, sweets and so on, and we don't even bat an eye to that. So it's kind of the logical step that food will be eventually 3D printed, as I said, uh, so that we have access to it in more voluminous ways, which is a great thing. But there's also the idea of us accepting it. Do we want to move to this sort of a diet? And can it be used against us? What happens if there is like a power shortage or something happens to these uh, factories and there is a reduction in uh, the animal, uh, the, the animals, the domestic animals that we grow and we cannot cover the needs of the populations, because food, water are like basic necessities for us to exist. And my solution to this is open source. 
open source means basically that everyone has access to this technology and nobody owns it. And I think that open source should be spread to everything in general because the more people can make their own things, the easier it is to sustain sustain ourselves. And I'll give you an example, uh, bread. I have friends that bought their own little contraptions. I don't know what they're called. And they're just putting the dough inside of those uh, little machines and they bake the bread. And they make it however they wish. They put garlic in it because garlic bread is superior to any other bread. <laughs> I'm joking. And they can make however they wish their their uh, livelihood uh, when it comes to nutrition and so on. And they can even put more uh, uh, more of the stuff they like there. Or if they have kids, they can look at the nutritional value to see how much they need and so on. It's It's really cool. So... Like when you have this uh, uh, technology of uh, precision fermentation coming onto the market, and it will come into the market because big companies only look for profitability. This means that farms will suffer. But what if we take this technology from the hands of uh, big companies and put it in the hands of farmers? Then dedicated farming communities can also contribute to food. And... If we even simplify the technology so that anybody can use it, everybody can have this one of these devices in their homes and have access to food unlimited. You know, you only need to buy the basic ingredients to mix it up to create whatever you need. And then there is also about tradition versus these uh, new trends and if people like to go more traditional versus going more mainstream. But this is more of a personal thing, in my opinion. This is the thing about evolution. Evolution can be uncomfortable and it can happen overnight. Unlike other, uh, our predecessors, uh, other generations uh, before us, they saw evolution at a slower pace. Things happen more, not so frequent as today. Because I predict that in the next 10, 15 years, a lot of the things that we consider normal right now will change. And maybe some of those changes will go for the better, but it will be difficult for us to adapt in such an, a short amount of time. And these technologies are not created overnight, or they haven't been created uh, yesterday. It, it has been taking decades for them to improve upon them. But now they're at this turning point where they have everything set up and it all falls in place like little puzzle pieces and they're starting to shape the world and we are not so happy when we have changes that we're not uh, comfortable with or we see things that are going in a way we're not so keen going towards but if we want to survive as a species we have to do these steps now when I say that things will change, I don't know. Sometimes I look at people around me and I kind of see that we're compliant to many of these subtle changes. For example, the internet. You and me, that we are right here in this moment on the internet, we are dependent on our devices that connect to the uh, electronic medium. Uh, personally, I'm, I can detach from this medium, but then again, I really need it because for work and stuff, so I depend on it. But even when I'm disconnected, I kind of feel like this obsession of, oh, I want to check something. And it's not so easy without having the information at my fingertips. And fortunately, I have books and other places to look for information and I can ask people. So... There's always a medium out there that you can extend yourself, but you have to pull yourself from this electronic medium where everything is so fast and everything is just so embedded into how we live our lives online. And uh, in a way, for evolution to work, we need to be a bit rebellious. We don't need to go down the path exactly as it is laid to us. Because we come from the animal kingdom, so we have to, I don't know, bring out the animals within us and go a little bit mental and do things just 
for the sake of living in the moment because otherwise we're just looking at life living on online and thinking are we really living life or are we just passing through life and if passing through life is your objective okay great more power to you but for the rest of the people that are still confused of how things are developing in this world and about their life and looking for a I don't know, a place they could belong or a place they can fit in. Being rebellious can push that bubble of comfort and make you see things in a different perspective because when you go wild, you take risks. And I'm not saying wild in the sense of hurting somebody or hurting yourself, but I mean doing something that's awkward to you. And... When you push yourself out of that uh, comfort zone, you see it like, oh, I was capable of doing this. This is so cool. Why haven't I tried it before? And it's that uh, mental fear or mental block that we always put in our brain. And are like, ah, what if? The what ifs can are, are unlimited. They come in infinite supplies if we're going to explore that avenue, you know. But when we take those risks, it's uh, it's crazy what we can do. And... If I would uh, correlate this to art, uh, the, the world was not ready to step out of classicism, but when it was challenged by impressionism, realism, expressionism, for example, a lot of isms I know, uh, <laughs> it was a turning point, point uh, on how artists started viewing the world and saying like, we don't want to go exactly at, as it was planned. We want to tweak this experience to make it crazy, to make it more custom to ourselves. So when I'm looking at younger generations than me, I don't look at them to doubt their abilities or say like, oh, back in my time, you have no idea how cool it was. No, there are still some cool things that I am unaware of right now and some things that I wish I would have known many years behind, uh, before, sorry. But... Somehow, I also want to transition part of uh, my experiences to younger audiences and say, be a little bit mental or be a, a rebellious little animal from within because it's cool. It's cool to live life with a bit of insanity in it. It makes life so much more interesting rather than just become a cog in the machine. And whatever you do, just do it with passion. And if you look at music today and you see how commercial it is and how copy-pasted it is, and you look at the golden years of music between, I put it between 60s and 80s, but it could be longer than that. And that, that in that time frame, you see how many people were singing with such passion, with such soul, with such uh, love for what they were doing, that you identify with that moment. You want to live that moment. And if you're not just a copy-paste of the person next to you or of the general audience that goes into the direction of evolution that the world is taking right now and just deviate a little bit, you can actually make evolution for far more interesting and sporadic than we can ever imagine it to be. You guys stay awesome. Catch you in the next episode. Bye, 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 bye.